Today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the logic gate and the distance checker. All right. So I'm going to kind of start by doing some pretty basic stuff with the logic gate. All right. I want it so this door right here, or sorry, that door is only going to open once this uh, envelope is collected, right? So with the logic gate, it's uh, kind of more, a lot of the toys in the toy box, they're an if-then statement. Well, the logic gate is an if-then or else statement, right? It has two different options. It will do whether it's open or if it's closed after receiving an input. So the first thing, I want it to receive an input. So when this is entered, this trigger area, it's entered by any player. I want it to send an input to this logic gate. All right, and by default, the logic gate is closed or it's open, right? So when you take the logic gate, you open a fresh toy box with a logic gate in it. By default, it will be open. Or if you take it off your ribbon and you place it it's going to be open. So when it receives an input, when I enter this um, trigger area, sorry, that door's not set up yet. When I enter that trigger area, it'll send an input to this logic gate, and since it's open, it will output because the logic gate's open. All right. So when it's open, it's going to output. What do I want it to do? I want it to make like a buzz noise, right? It's gonna make a buzzer noise. All right. And when the logic gate's closed, it will input blocked. That would be the second option. So there's two options with the logic gate. Either it will output or input blocked, depending on whether the gate is open or closed. So if the input's blocked, then Oh, I want this door here. Maybe I'll move this quick. Hold up. I'm going to go into spark mode to do this. So, when the input is blocked, that's when I want this door to open. Great. But, now I need to make a way for that logic gate to close, right? Because when I enter this, that logic gate's open. We should get a buzzer. Oh, I know I. Here we go. I gotta change the settings in this um, sound effects. I don't want 3D locator, because that's way over there, right? By that device. So when I enter this, since the logic gate is open, yep, it's gonna buzz. All right, because I haven't collected this. So I want this. This envelope, oh, not when it resets, sorry. When it's broken or collected. So when I collect that envelope, I want it to close this logic gate. All right. So now, if I enter here, then this receives an input, then it outputs, makes a buzzer noise. All right. Unless I collect this envelope. Now, when I enter this, the door opens. All right, so that's kind of the most basic thing to do with logic gate, and I like demonstrating it because it really gives you an idea of how the logic gate works with an actual door, right? Um, all right, so another thing you can do, this is uh, a little more complicated than I like to do. It's more of a logic chain. Right when you have a bunch of different criteria uh, to happen, you want it to do different things, right? So initially, in this first example, the criteria was um, if the envelope's collected, then the logic gate would close, right? So something different happens depending on if that was collected or not. But I want a three different, you know, criterion to be met, right? 
to have different options. And what I'll do here, I'll go and I'll need, I want to do a logic chain here and I want four different things to happen depending on which criterion is met, right? So for that, I'm going to need three logic gates. See, because each logic gate um, has uh, two options, right? Either input blocked or output. And you'd think, okay, well, mathematically, if you have like two of them, that would mean there's four different options. But not really, because I'm doing a logic chain. That means for these other logic gates, one of the options, right? which would be the output, needs to be an input for the next uh, logic gate in the chain, right? So if I need, if I want three options, I'll have two logic gates. If I want four, I will have three. So I want four, so I have three logic gates here, right? So the first thing, when this um, target, when it's hit, I want this first logic gate to receive an input. Right? Alright, it receives an input. Now if it's open and it receives an input, I want this logic gate to output. Alright, so output will be an input for this next logic gate. And this logic gate, if it's open, it's going to output. And for an output, I want it to be an input for the next logic gate. And you'll see why in a minute. All right. So then, all of these are open. No criteria other than hitting that uh, trigger has been met, right? So, I want this one to output. And when it outputs, I want an enemy to show up, all right? Um, which enemy should I have? I will have a king's guard, right? A king's guard's gonna show up if I hit that target. I'm gonna do something really quick here because I don't want, um, I have a button. So when it's pressed, I want these bad guys to go away. I don't want this place crawling with different um, enemies. All right, so that'll be the first option is the Rhino Guard, or no, not Rhino Guard, King's Guard. He will appear if no criteria is met. But what if there's a townsperson, right? An AI, a friend, right? If there's a townsperson in there, in that trigger area, I want this logic gate here to close, okay? And it will open once that townsperson has exited too, right? So then when that townsperson, the friend, he exits, this is gonna open back up. All right, I'm gonna grab a townsperson really quick. Where's my townsperson? I'm gonna use Hera. And I'm gonna change the properties of this townsperson to sleep because I don't want them moving around. All right, so first thing is now, I want, all right, here we go. When this is hit, oh, whoops, I gotta hit it first. When it's hit, the King's Guard shows up, right? That's because no criteria was met other than that being hit. So it went through each logic gate and then made a King's Guard happen. Now, I have it so when this townsperson is in that trigger area, this logic gate here is going to be closed. So, when it receives the input, the input's going to be blocked. Then what do I want to do? I want a different... Um, enemy to appear, right? Uh, what should I have? I'll have a Star Wars 
first order strike team. Okay, so what we did here, there's no one in that trigger area. I throw it, right? Whoops. That town's, or that guard shows up. All right, but now if this townsperson is entered that trigger area, this logic gate's gonna close. So then if I hit this target, what's gonna happen? Who's gonna show up? Whoops. See, got a stormtrooper or a first order trooper, whatever you call those guys. All right. But now, when this person exits, it's going to open that logic gate back up. And... Whoops. Did it. It's back to being a King's Guard again. But what happens... I want another option. That was two options, right? For the third option, I want it to do something else when it's entered by a player. So... When player one enters that, I want this logic gate, the second one there, to close. Now I'm going to want it to open back up when um, the player, when it's exited by player one. So player one gets out of there, this logic gate's going to open back up. Alright, so now we need an option for when this logic gate's closed and it receives an input we want it to do something else, right? That criteria is met, the player is in that trigger area, the input is blocked when that target is hit. So what kind of enemy should show up now? I'll go with Evil Broccoli. Okay, so no one's in that trigger area. We know who's gonna show up. King's Guard. All right, but now the player has entered this trigger area. Closes that logic gate. Now, that logic gate input blocked a broccoli. Great. So, that is three different um, options from one action, right? Is that you can hit that, and depending on who's in this trigger area, a different enemy is going to appear. That's a lot of fun, but now I want it to be a little more complicated. Not very much more complicated, but I need a fourth option. So I have three options. Here comes the fourth one. So I'm going to use a logic and really quick. Logic and. And I'm going to want, uh, what else do I want? I want a fireworks cannon, right? Where's that fireworks cannon? Game maker. Um, fireworks cannon. All right. So now I'm going to do something else here. When this is entered by any, or no, by player one. I want the logic and to receive an input. See, logic and, what it does is um, it will only output once all inputs that it has possible have been uh, completed, right? So, as of right now, if player one goes in here, that would be all of them being completed. But I also want it to, when entered by um, a friend, right? So when that townsperson enters it, I want that to also be an input. And then when it's exited by, you know, player, I'll just go player for simplicity, this will reset, okay? That means that it's able to receive those inputs again and then output. So once a player and a townsperson have entered that trigger area, it's going to close this first logic gate here, okay? This one's going to close. Now, 
I want something else to happen. When this one's closed, the input will be blocked, right? So the player and the townsperson are in that trigger area. I shot the target. The input's going to be blocked. I'm going to have fireworks go off. A flower. Red flower. Okay, good. Now, let's test it out. We have... Oops. Townsperson entered. Player one entered. Now that firework should go off. All right, four different options, depending on which criteria was met. That's how a logic chain works. Now, I think I'm gonna talk about the distance checker, right? The thing with the distance checker, it's similar to a dynamic trigger area, but only better, right? Because a dynamic trigger area or a trigger area, um, they go by, you know, entering that trigger area. You can have it so, like I over here, a townsperson, but the problem is, is if I only want a specific townsperson to enter something to trigger it, right? That's where this comes in handy, because I can use two specific um, targets. So I'm going to grab two townspeople. I'm going to use a, a spotted Eagle Ray, right, vehicle is going to be one of the actors, and then General Grievous. I'll let General Grievous roam. So, what you want to do is you want to set... I want him to be one of the triggers, right? So, a new actor connection, that's going to be target A. So this is going to measure the distance between General Grievous and... I want another act actor connection, which is going to be a Stingray target B. Alright, so I'm going to set the properties. Target A is going to be that connected actor. Target B, well, that's also going to be the connected actor, but only that's a different connected actor, right? And when they come within a distance of 10, because you can set the distances between those two players, and then if they enter or exit those distances, depending on, you know, what you want to happen, it can trigger it, right? I want to act, and I want the distance visible. That's a really nice thing, is you can have it tell you the distance. Do you see that in the um, middle there? It's saying, you know, 71, 72 units as General Grievous walks around. So that's the distance between General Grievous and the vehicle. And then you can also set it, uh, new logic connection, right? So. When the target comes within distance 1, which is 10, right, you can have it have a Disney Infinity White uh, logo happen, right, from the fireworks. So now I'm going to go find General Grievous, because he kind of ran away. He's way over here. And you notice how I'm bringing them closer? That's measuring the distance right in the middle top of the screen there, right? I'm getting closer, getting closer. Now as I approach, get closer to 10, I enter 10 and look what happened. Oh, should I do it again? Great, that's fun. But That's pretty simple. Now I'm going to take a quick break and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do something a little bit more complex with the um, distance checker and logic gate. Alright, please hold.